Hi from RCF. In this video, we demonstrate the rigging procedures for a line array HDL 30A system. This procedure can also be used for both HDL 28 and HDL 50A system. We will first go to design the system with RCF Easy Shape Designer. The cluster will consist of eight HDL 30A modules, and our area to be covered will range from 8 to 60 meters. By setting this data in Easy Shape Designer, in this case within the RDNet remote control software, we can obtain all the data we need for the assembly and hanging of the system. Let's select HDL 30A, 8 modules, coverage data from 8 to 60 meters. Create the virtual cluster and set the height of the flybar. Press the Auto Display button and we'll get all the data we need. Hanging point and orientation of the shaker, as well as the angles we have to set among the modules. We recommend printing them or writing them down. For further information on how to design a line array system, we recommend to read our guide Line Array System Design and Tuning that can be found in the technical document section of our website. First, we have to prepare the flybar by releasing and then fixing the brackets for the front of the first modules, inserting the pin, possibly from the inside, to prevent the movement of the brackets. Now, let's position the flybar over the first module of the first HDL30 cart and insert the front pins using those on the modules. At this point, we have to fix the rear bracket. Lift the flybar and insert the rear bracket. Then first insert the suspension pin so that it slides in the front lane of the bracket, the one facing the front of the flybar. Once inserted, lift the flybar until it locks, keeping traction and insert the compression pin. Now let's insert the accessory for hanging on the flybar. It can have position B with the more chamfered part facing forward or aid with the same facing backward. In our case, the project indicates position B. Once the accessory has been directed, fix it by inserting the two pins. The first must correspond to the position indicated by the project. In our case, in position number 19, so the pins will be inserted in positions 19 and 20. Now, with the cart still on the ground, let's insert the suspension pins on the right side as indicated by the project. In our case, in position 0.7, 1.7, 1.7. At this point, we hook the lifting system to the flybar. We suggest to work with a double chain in order to use the second attachment point to fix the wiring which in this way will wait on the lifting system and not on the flybar. This will prevent too heavy cabling from affecting the overall inclination of the cluster, once on air. The time has come to lift the system, with the first four modules, which will splay automatically and lock in the position of the project. Now we have to insert the pins to avoid the compression of the system in the holes on the left side, the one with the yellow writing, where we have to insert the pins in the position corresponding to those on the right side, the one with the white writing. We can now release the cart by first removing the rear bracket pin and then the two front pins. Now we can start wiring the cluster with the power supply and with audio and network cables. In the case of the HDL30, with a 16 amps 220 volts line, we can daisy chain four modules without problems. Once the power supply part is wired, connect the network cable for RDNet control and the audio signal cable. Remember that the cluster must always be wired starting from the first module at the top, as the addresses that the software will assign to the individual modules depend on the direction of the wiring, which must necessarily always have the first module at the top as module number one, with the following modules connected in daisy chain. 
Once the wiring is finished, we have to lock the rain covers. Now, after positioning the second cart, we can proceed to assemble the last four modules. First, insert the two front pins and then lower the cluster until the fourth module rests on the fifth. We insert the hooking bracket and its pin in the white part, in the position indicated by the project. In our case, the position 2.7. Let's make sure that the suspension pin of the last modules are properly inserted in the position indicated by the project. And at this point, we can lift the system that will take its final shape. Remove the cart, always starting from the rear first, and, as for the first four modules, insert the compression pins on the left side, the one with the yellow writing, in the position corresponding to the pins inserted on the right side, in our case C2.7, C3.7 and C5. Fix all the rain covers in all the modules of the cluster and attach a metric core to the flybar for measuring the height of the system. We can now lift the system up to the height defined by the project. Finally, we secure the tie rods to the two brackets of the last module that will allow the appropriate orientation of the cluster once on air. A suitable anti-sliding accessory will allow the rope to be locked in the correct position, thus avoiding the movement of the cluster. Thanks for your attention. Greetings from RCF. <laughs>